Welcome to Inside the Duke. My name is Tara Flynn. I am with Rebecca Thibault from B and Key Boutique. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so very excited. So, tell me a little bit about your business. What is B and Key Boutique? So, B and Key is a consignment store that we offer 50 50 with zero hidden fees. So, we kind of wanted to create this consignment store that was like game changing where it was like we were coming into the consignment world but doing something just a little bit differently than the rest of them so we wanted to offer this 50 50 and have nothing hiding so this honest relationship between the owner and the consigner where they actually got a chance to see what they sell versus you just dropping your items off and then them just disappearing and you just getting money so we really wanted to create that so then our consigners could create more of a business on their end where they knew what was working and what wasn't. Okay. So just so our listening audience, a consignment. So a consigner is anybody like, do you have to create clothes to send or is it clothes that are in good condition that I want yeah. to resell? Like what is consignment? So consignment is bringing your items that you already have in your closet, whether they be something that you bought brand new with tags on, never used it, or just items that you've already worn and you bring them in and we go through the process of if we can resell those items in the store. Okay. So if I bring something to you, then you'd yeah. be like, yes, this is resaleable. Or do I drop off a bag with my name on it? Bag. What's that process? Just so a bag. You come, yeah. Do you come in with a full bag of clothing? We steam everything. So you come in with one full bag with your name and your phone number and email address. And then there's, which actually just started, uh, we have a, I want to say barcode or SKU code. I keep getting them mixed up, but you come in, take a picture of it and it sends you to the contract right away. So oh, wow. it's done right, like super convenient. And now you get text messages on when you have items to be picked up. So if there's items that we didn't take, you'll get a text message with a notification stating, hey, Got items for pickup so that way you're not missing out because I think we all agree a lot of people don't check their emails oh yes <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes for sure <laughs> we're really yeah. trying to fix that so that it's an opportunity that there isn't missed items that get donated on people and it's really I'm gonna say that was probably my toughest one is donating items that don't get picked up that they want to pick up but don't come to pick up. So I'm like, <laughs> panic. <laughs> right. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. That's so what was your inspiration? Did you send your stuff to consignment? Like, how was that story for you that so, you found this inspiration? Years and years of thrifting. I'm going to say like the age of five, where I just fell in love with my grandma consign or not consigning, but thrifting. I just love the whole, like finding like this treasure of finding another piece, you know, somebody else's junk is now my treasure. And years and years of just loving fashion, but then, you know, having three sisters and like, I would take their clothes and they would take mine. It would feel like brand new to us. And then the consignment I consigned and it got to a point where there's a lot of questions where it was like, okay, well, where is my stuff? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. W what's working? Why didn't that work? You know, just not this straight up, like honesty that happens in consignment sometimes. And I don't think it's a fault. I think it's just the programming and the way that tech is at one point to what we have capable now. So to be a consigner now and have your own account mm -hmm. so that you can actually see what's there. I mean, it's kind of really changed the game on that level. Oh, I, I can imagine for sure. Tech is changing everything. And oh, so any, that's awesome to hear about it's in this industry as well. So yeah. And create a boutique. I wanted to create an experience where it wasn't a thrift store. Okay. Yeah. So it was something that you walked in and you felt like you were in a boutique versus, you know, just walking into like, Oh, here we go again type of thing. <laughs> so, and the smells were very particular on really controlling the smell. And so that's where the steaming comes into. Cause you, sometimes you'll hold an item. It doesn't, you know, you don't get any smells off of it, but then you come with the steamer and it, it really, you're like, okay, yeah. Yay or nay on that one. <laughs> so yeah. it's cause it's one of those things where you walk into thrift stores and like, they've got that smell happening and we really wanted to change that. So it, it does feel, cause I mean, smell feelings, mm -hmm. right? Totally. For sure. It's all about the senses, right? It creates a vibe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if you could do anything else, then what would it be? I would be a writer. Ooh. 
if I could do anything else, I'd be a writer and dot, 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 dot. <laughs> so like a storybooks or like what yeah. kind of writing? Yeah. Yeah. I can't get into too much detail on that oh, right now, okay. but it is, yeah, it is something that is in the works. And oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Way to put your vision on paper. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So what's the greatest thing that you've learned about yourself? Through bit, how resilient I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, resilience, I think is huge, especially in business, but I wouldn't change it because okay. it's not like I have a boss telling me what to do. It's up to me to do what I need to do mm -hmm. to like, so that inner, I mean, that inner strength and the power of going, okay, I can do this. Yeah. There's nobody, there's nobody I get to go to at the end of the day, but myself. So yeah, I think resilience and perseverance. Yeah. So have you had a lot of like pushback and, and everything since you've started that you've have found, like, is there a moment that you're like, nope, I am resilient. <laughs> like, is, is there a story there that. <laughs> um, and it's funny because even my employee, she's experienced this, which is funny. It was a moment where someone had come in and they said, what's your education? How do you, how do you plan on even opening this business? Like, what is your background? And instantly my response is, listen, I've been shopping since I was five years old. <laughs> and that feeling of knowing, yeah, I've been to school and I've done things. So prior to the business opening up, I was working in a funeral home. So two different types of businesses. Yes. Um, but it also really prepared me on the sense that my gifting for feeling the room and understanding people is just a little bit more up there. And yeah. So, I mean, at that point it is what it is. People have their pushbacks on what they think you should do with your business and how you should run it. And I think that's just sometimes a small community. Mm -hmm. We kind yes. of can come across that way, very fishbowl like. So mm -hmm. for sure. Other other than that, I mean, it's good. What, you just got to let it roll off your shoulders because you're the one that runs the business. They don't have to pay the taxes or the employees at the end of the day. <laughs> very true. That's very <laughs> true. So if you could do anything differently with your business, like what would it, is there anything that you would have done if looking back on it? Yeah. So thinking about that, I would have actually not changed anything. Really? Because it actually allowed me to re come like reformat rethink and redo it instead of just coming in the gate and being like perfect 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 it was like mm -hmm. to have the feels especially knowing where you run your business it's got to be your demographic so had we decided to open it up in Edmonton it would have been a different story mm -hmm. where opening up in Leduc it's got its own demographic too and I think that really I learned a lot in that just from here to here to here even if it's a five minute drive, totally changes the game. Yeah, so sure. yeah, I wouldn't change anything on that. It It's only allowed us to be better and better and better. There you go. Yeah. So did, when you looking to start, did you like look in Edmonton or was it like, I'm in the Duke, yeah. this is, you did, hey? Yeah, we looked at a few places because it's like, where do you want to go to? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to open up this business, what does that look like? And then you look at your leasing and this is all prior to COVID. So literally we opened our doors on July 19th and then fast forward COVID happened. And so it was, yeah, I'm grateful and glad we opened in Leduc versus opening in Edmonton, especially knowing what, you know, was going to come later yeah. on in the future, but yeah. That's awesome. So what would, what do you think was, would have been the difference in Edmonton versus Leduc? Um, I definitely think the demographic on what I would have had in my store be or what I have now, I mm -hmm. think that really just changes, right? Your mm -hmm. age range on who's coming to the store, you know, what works, what doesn't work. So I think that would have been the clothing itself would have been the biggest change. Nothing internally, just clothing wise. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah. Because I'm not going to say no to my cute little grandmas that go for their speed walks in the morning that like to stop by, right? So, <laughs> right. Like, but who's to say if I was to get that in Edmonton? No, totally. Yeah, no, I yeah. get it for sure. So what's your favorite thing about running your business? Honestly, I don't think it hit me until three months ago when I was driving, like from Edmonton back to, and I'm like, I don't have a boss. <laughs> and it like really hit me that I don't have a boss to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I think there was beauty in that feeling. Mm -hmm. That freedom of like this, this look what has happened in the last little bit since I, but I'm so grateful. I mean, I know a lot of business owners say that, but to be able to give in this opportunity and the timing and everything and how it just laid itself out, it's just, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. Right. So is it just that you get to, as in boss, as in like you get to control the vision or is it like just everything about being Yeah. I mean, everything about being a boss, but being a boss in a way that I finally get an opportunity to take what I've learned and the do's and don'ts on how I would have. So I very much like to sit back and people watch. So years and years of people watching and going, mm, I don't think we should have handled that in that way. I would take like mental notes Mm -hmm. and now getting the opportunity to actually live that out is just, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, for to be sure. encouraging and allow my employees to be creative in their way without putting them in a box has been absolutely one of those things that I feel is should be changing in business a little bit more because we all know micromanaging doesn't work. No, no, for <laughs> nobody sure. Like, I, nobody likes to be micromanaged. Yeah, no. There's a way to teach common sense and then there's micromanaging. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with that for sure. So well, you mentioned when, when you started it, you had a little pushback with someone was like, what's your education? Did you receive yeah. a lot of that when you were when you were starting in regards to pushback? Just who are you? What are you doing here kind of thing? Um, there was also a lot of like good luck. <laughs> okay, AKA yeah. businesses come to die down Main Street. <laughs> yes. And I was like, okay, okay. So that was a very consistent one. And that's when I put my heels in and going, okay, what, what is it that needs to move or change perhaps that can better? Cause I see the vision of main street in the inner of Leduc, right? And I, I can see the beauty and what we have to offer on so many levels. So to be able to keep that growing and finding a different dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. I think is what's going to really change people's perceptions to businesses coming to die on main street. (laughs) True. Yes. Wow. I've, I've born and raised here and very, very little time has it ever been full. There's always vacancies. So I can see that, but if you actually read the, the plan that they have for the downtown, like it's very inspiring and what they plan for events and walkability and all of that. It's just, yeah, I can, I totally feel the vision as well. So, yeah. so I'm like on the other side going, just wait, just like hold your horses. So <laughs> just getting that old, old mentality of that feeling of that's how it was going to be versus like in my opposite where I'm like, oh, I'll be here for a while type of attitude. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm surprised that you got that, but I, I guess if you are <laughs> opening a store at main street, I could see how people would be. Right. Hey, some people don't have filters and that's okay. Right. Sometimes the truth <laughs> just slides right out and it is what it is. Yeah. No, and when you're sure. cute and 80, I'm not going <laughs> to say any different. <laughs> right. Well, and I suppose that's, that's the vision that they had, right. Cause that's yeah. what they've seen. So that would yeah. make sense. And they probably haven't read the plan to see the vision of the future. <laughs> and they may not even care. I mean, <laughs> that's the other. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, for sure. So what has kept you in business then so long? Like what is there, what has yeah. kept you in, in um, business? So uh, the fact that we have made it through COVID, I'm grateful for. Uh, and just, I can't remember who it was because I'd like to say, I want to say it was Rachel Hollis made a statement about how her business went through the recession. And you got to think in a different limelight. You got to think the opposite way that you were thinking on originally your business was going to run. What are you going to do? How are you going to change it? And something we had done prior to COVID happening, which was private events and parties, Mm -hmm. yeah, had really then morphed into this epic motion where it was like, okay, well, these are the restrictions. Can we follow the guidelines? Are we able to do this? And then it just took off. And not only did it take off the collaboration with Dress For You Styling, which is Kim, she came in and as much as I love to style, Kim's heart and desire was the other side note to being able to dress women in their stage of life. And mm-hmm. what she does, it just, there's a beauty. Like I love being part of these uh, private shopping experiences because there's such like this 
this beautiful moment where we all look at ourselves in the mirror at points and go, I don't like myself. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do that, but then be able to be the one thing that made us survive through COVID. It was like this. Yeah. Like we found the golden nugget and we ran with it because it was, it's what people are asking for. Yes. So is it the events that they're asking for? The stylish, the The style, the styling in the private. And the other side is like, I am not your salesperson. Even when we first opened the store, so you came out of the dressing room and I'm like, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what do you feel like? And they're like, well, I don't, then it's a no. Yeah. I don't want anybody leaving the store with items that they haven't tried on because it's just going to sit in your closet. And then we're back to the same thing we were back to with the item prior to you purchasing it. Right. Yeah. So to be able to have that opportunity, no one interrupts you. It's just you and Kim music's playing. Like you just have this one-on-one experience, I think really opened us up to, this is what a lot of us women are seeking and to feel comfortable. Right. Yeah, for sure. No, it totally is. Cause how many times do you go to the, to a yeah. store, you try on some clothes and you're like, you go out there and some kid on her cell phone, not even, you know, and she's yeah. like, yeah, it looks good. Sure. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. yeah, sorry to interrupt your text messaging. I just, you know, <laughs> trying to get a pair of pants here. Like, <laughs> and to get an honest, an honest opinion, but Kim goes out of her way prior to get your needs. Yeah. So then she goes through the store and pulls items. So like, it's already this, like you, you're taken care of from beginning and to end. And that's where it was like this really just, it, it turned out to be this beautiful flower in, and I know I'm making like a metaphor here, but for me, that's, it was like a bud. Oh, I lost you. You gotta go. There we, there we go. go. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's okay. So we'll start back with it was it was a metaphor, and then we'll. It see was a it. metaphor, so it was it was a bud originally because it started with a girl who I'm still close with. She's like, "Hey, can I have my birthday party?" So prior to COVID, it was like, "Yeah, absolutely." Shut you know, shut her down, have the birthday party. Girls, you know, having some wine, shopping, hanging yeah. out, and it was beautiful, but it never really got pushed where it needs to be pushed. Yeah. So. That, like they make TV shows of moments like that. Like it is something that women are seeking because like literally there's like legit TV shows about going shopping and feeling refreshed and coming out feeling like yeah. a new person. Like it is a moment that not only do people feel, but they want to have it so much. They watch TV shows about it. And yeah. they like, it, it's, it's definitely a moment where they, uh, where you don't women... have to go drop $3,000 to get a glass of champagne to walk into Gucci. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. <laughs> totally so, that's that's so it's not even just about you know selling and and having clothes that you know in that moment but it's also about how people feel when they try them on so it's really like a full umbrella that you're creating with your with this boutique that's yeah. really inspiring I mean, adding other businesses on main street to be part of it too right so like we had one moment where we didn't have the items in the because I'm consignment right yeah so I get what I get yeah and it was one of those things where it's like okay we don't have this so we phoned up MV consignment we phoned up Jessica from Sarah D and we said hey can you bring these items and they both came in brought the items um so just to see that moment where it was like hey here's more options that's awesome See, yeah. and that, that I love that it's like such a community and that there is that camaraderie and that as much as you are all clothing, you tie each other together yeah. and it's, it's collaborative to, for our citizens of Leduc. That's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So it's yeah. Totally and inspired. to support each other too. Right. That's the other side of business that I really hope that we can change is women supporting each other, but actually supporting each other. Mm-hmm. Cause so, we, you how, know, how do you see ahead. that? Yeah, no, I was going to say like, how does, how does that play out? What do you see when you see that? So obviously when you grew up at one point, business was co- competitive. Like it was straight minded. You couldn't look at any other business, like focused on yourself and you're like, Hey, this is, you know, we're going to be not that business isn't competitive. So I'm not saying that cause you mm-hmm. still have to be competitive, but to embrace other ideas that are not your own and be okay with that. I think changes the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when you, 
hold each other's hands and you lift each other up in that way. Like, you know, that's her store or her store, but how can we collab together and really thinking outside of the box? Whereas before it was like, oh, she owns that store. Okay, cool. And then that was it. No interactions from there. So being able to really morph each other into how can we actually support each other? Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, it has to shift because like there the only way we grow is if we understand, I think, and really support each other and promote each other. And, you know, even with the downtown association or the main street, like it's all supporting each other to create this vision of what could be, which means, you know, you have to, there should be collaboration in all of that as well to make the whole area succeed. Yeah. Right. And I think yeah. that's the beauty of main street now is that there is this where businesses all have each other's backs that, it's pretty epic. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And I can feel it like in, in interviewing and, and going down main street and seeing like, they don't have these events when I was growing up, they didn't have that kind (laughs) of like, you know, momentum for main street that they Mm. do now that you can, you can feel it from the business owners, even in how it's marketed and everything that everybody's just um, supporting each other. So I can feel it from the outside. So yeah, can't wait to see where that goes. I love it. (laughs) And what's kept you motivated then when the days of, when the days are hard, what keeps you inspired? Honestly, what keeps me motivated is when I come home and I shut off everything, the phone, the computer, everything, shut it down just to get that break. Because there's a lot of, I had to learn, I'm going to say in probably three months that if I didn't stop, I was going to burn out of both sides of the candle. Cause it was go, 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 go. Oh, I need to answer this email at like, it keeps freezing. So it I does. hope that's not me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm on so weird. That's I, okay. It was so good before. Now that's okay. So <laughs> we'll we can going. start. No, I can, I can start back with the question. Okay. And then we'll, okay. we'll go. Cause then go. they can edit that off. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so what do you do uh, to keep motivated when the days get hard? So for me, it's shutting off the world from my phone, the computer, all of that, and just laying in silence just so that I can get a break from all the, yeah, from questions, emails, responses on Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff. Cause it gets to be a bit daunting where your brain doesn't want to shut off as a business owner, but then I'm not home at home with my kids. Cause I'm thinking about all the other 50 things I need to do. So learning in three months, that's where my mentor Dave, he was like, Hey, you're going to burn out both sides. This is what you need to do before it's too late. Mm-hmm. So it was, I really reevaluated and took what he had to say to heart. Like I didn't ignore it. I just was like, okay, I do need to change or I am going to burn out because it is a lot. Yes. And a lot of people don't see those other dynamics where, you know, it was me at one point pricing the clothes, staying up till three o'clock in the morning, steaming everything, getting it aligned, getting my kids sent off to school, then having to show up back to the shop. So it, there was a lot to process and then answering emails. Hey, where's my items? And I'm like, ah, it's midnight. Like, <laughs> and then I want to answer them too. So, I mean, I'm just as silly to be doing that. And that's where I had to really be like, no, this is work time and you will get an email. It just won't be right now. And to mm-hmm. be okay with that. Cause typically my OCD would be like, <laughs> right. I need to answer it now. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. So stillness is the key for you. Stillness is the key. It's just, and that's where I revamp, get energized, and then right back to the grind again. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you mentioned you had had a mentor. So is that like just in business or like, how does that work for you? So business, so funny, um, backstory. (laughs) When I was, I want to say I got Team, I want to say it was 16, 16. I found out that I had dyslexia and Erlen syndrome. And okay. then not until my early twenties that I had ADHD. So there was a big combining of like, I didn't feel that I was capable of doing what I do now. Mm-hmm. And Dave came through, I was like scamming through like stuff with like dyslexia. And it was like, Oh, rise, which is in Edmonton entrepreneurs with disabilities. Okay. So I'm like, Hey, well, is it really a disability? Like I'm not, cause just the way we grew up in a small town, like I still had to push through 
regardless, there was mm -hmm. nothing there to help us at that point. And, um, I phoned them up. I said, Hey, what is it? And she goes, uh, yeah, come on in. So I went down and they are really part of my, my base on me starting my business. Nice. So yeah, they have a lot. It's just what they have to offer with entrepreneurs with disabilities is massive and huge. They've got loans that can help out. They have mentorship programs, wherever you think you're struggling, the community is just, it's epic. And so Dave has been a part, Catherine's part of it too, but there's, and my other mentor, like there's just so many people I could thank just cause it's been epic, but yeah, he's, he's been amazing. He's kind of like, if you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, he's like Captain Holt to me. <laughs> and I'm Amy. <laughs> that's awesome. No, so, that's fantastic. So like you knew that you wanted to start a business. So you were looking up online and then you found them. And yeah, and it's been a years and years of me even just wanting to do a business plan for the sake of doing a business plan. Nice. Because yeah. I always read a lot of business owners don't even do a business plan. And I was like, I'll just make a business up. And so mm -hmm. I think it was already in the sketch of having my own business. Yeah. But everything just came together through this. So, yeah. That's awesome. Way to have yeah. a support team. Like, you know, oh. like not even do have a business plan, but most business owners don't even have a support team or, you know, they just run and catch the ball and throw it to someone else and keep running without even having a moment of stillness or to yes. reflect and a path. They just keep going. So and somebody awesome. to like sit you down and be like, like know your personality and go, okay, this is your weakness. This is your strength. This is where you need to focus on. Yeah. It's been, yeah. But in a caring way, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. If it's not, caring, then you might not receive it the same way either. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's got to come from a space of love for sure. Yeah. Um, how do you celebrate your wins? That's okay. It's so funny. So that'll lead back into Dave again. I used to be a celebration of big wins. Yes. We make it through the first year, then we can celebrate, you know, we make this much money, but then we can celebrate. And Dave was like, absolutely not small victories. There you oh, go. Oh, you went to get your business, your business license. Yeah, that's a victory. You need to celebrate that. And so then I started celebrating all these tiny little things and it made it even more epic. Yeah. Because now I really realize what it takes to, you know, own a business yeah. and how much respect I have for other business owners, you know, just the little things. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. true though, the little things, because it keeps the momentum up when you have, when you celebrate the little things, because yeah. without the little ones, the big one wouldn't be so right? So yeah. that's awesome. So what do you do when you, when you got your business license, what was your celebration? Oh, glass of wine, <laughs> some good food, just something that I was like, celebrate cheers that's and awesome. just have that moment. Right. Yeah. No, for sure. So what's the biggest pivot since you've started your business then? <laughs> um, Okay, hey, try it again. Sorry, you're not nope. asking the question. I don't that's know okay. what's going on. My internet was great before. Now it's like, <clears throat> no, that's okay. We'll just start back from the questions. It's all good. Okay. All right. Let's try that. Okay. <laughs> so, what's the biggest pivot since you started your business? I would have to say it is every day. Every day is a pivot. Like you're always moving and changing direction or this comes up and then you've got to go do this. So taking what I used to be scheduled, there is no schedule anymore. It's like every day has different things that now we have to move in this way or move that way. And now we homeschool too. Yes. So there's a lot of pivoting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. That's a yeah, that's a, that's a big shift on the sense that we, yeah, it's been excellent, but it's a pivot. For sure. For sure. So you mentioned that you had that online part as well. Like, was that something that um, you always intended to do was having that online component or was that a pivot for, as well for like the skew and the drop off and that, that like, was that always yeah. in the plan so to that get? Was always, or? Since I want to say since probably six months to having the POS system that we have, it was always something that I have been like, this needs to happen. It makes sense. 
having the communication between consigner and owner or, you know, even employee on that token, it needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was and always so it in was the some, works. It was always in the works, but it was like, what program, what works, what doesn't work, right? You've got to feel those your programming is. Yeah, for sure. Right. Okay. Does it work for TELUS? Yes. Does it work oh. for Bell? So there's a lot of things. That's why when people have their pushback moments, I'm like, they have no idea what it takes with something that seems super simple and non-complex. They don't know, understand the dynamic that goes in the people behind making those things happen. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Lots, lots of pro con lists. Lots yes. of, <laughs> yeah, no, I could see that for sure. So what are some of the challenges that you're facing now? Um, Honestly, our biggest challenge right now is just to get open back up okay. and to be at full capacity again. Yeah. Because once those doors open, then there's more things that we can, because prior to, we'll, um, and then all the new restrictions that came in, we'll have like charcuterie. So we can get charcuterie from rural roots, right? And then have wine and make a night out of it. And then have kids, like to be able to get back to doing those celebrations celebrations again, I think is going to be pretty epic. So right now that's literally the only thing that's keeping us in the way of. Right. For sure. So then yeah. if I wanted to have my birthday party, I could come to you and you'd like food and everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So food, it, everything and then dress for you. So Kim just to like help pick out outfits. So that's already done and just make a moment in a day out of it. That's awesome. So how yeah. many people like on average, would you suggest for something like that? Two or three? It depends. I mean, honest, my personal personal yeah. is yes. the, her package called the Scarlet. Okay. So that's my personal favorite. So that's just one on one with Kim. Cause I just see some beauty happening from that, those appointments. Um, and then the Samantha is the, the girl package, right? So very Samantha sex in the city where it's yeah, like yes. you coming out to hang out with your girlfriends so yeah, I would say max five, Okay. but yeah. we could probably still do more. I mean, if there's no restrictions and hopefully by July, when everything's good to go, we can open our doors in the full swing of things. That's awesome. That's cool. Okay. So if I wanted to find these packages, would I go online or where would I find them? Yeah. So you would go to dress for you styling and that's where everything gets booked is through her. Okay. Cause then she's, she's kind of like home base at that point. Right. Okay. So instead of me and then talking to her, it just makes it easier to just go straight to Kim and then everything gets booked and she does, she makes sure all the needs and everything are met. So yeah. There you go. Is that, is there a link on your website though, or just, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. where do you see your business in the next five years? Well, we're actually opening up our second location oh, this yay. summer. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that'll be in Beaumont. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah. So not too yeah. far of a jaunt for you. That's awesome. No, no, it'll be exciting and fun. And the next five years, I mean, man, I hope to see a few other B and keys pop up. Yeah. Throughout that's, Canada. That's, that's nice. Kind of, yeah. So I hope to see a few of those pop up and then hopefully that'll then take me there for to Spain on a beach somewhere writing what I need to write. <laughs> <laughs> End goal. That's fantastic. <laughs> wow. End goal. There you go. So like French, are you going to like be the store owner or are you thinking franchises as well? Yeah, this will be our first franchise. Oh, yay. That's quite, that's quite yeah. an accomplishment. So it's like legit franchising. That's fantastic. Yeah. But not on like the level people think franchising is because my biggest thing is I want to see other women be successful. Okay. And if I've created a recipe, we'll even call it Rebecca's recipe to success. Yeah. If you've never done business, you get to do it now. That's awesome. Here's all the paperwork. Here's everything ready to rock and roll for you. And then, you know, it's up to you to, to take it even further from there. Right. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think it can be, yeah. it can, go ahead. Uh, no, sorry. It can be a lot of, a lot of work. I mean, how many of us have sat at home going, Oh, I'd love to do this, but this has to be done. And that has to be done. And that has to be done. And then it never happens. Mm -hmm. And to be able to give an opportunity for somebody else to go, Oh my gosh, I love this. Let's do it. Yeah. But it's done. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. And I think that that 
that's great that you even had that business plan. Cause I think that's where lots of people get lost is they have this idea and it works for them. And then they think, Oh, I could franchise, but they never took a note. They never made a plan. They never had anything that they could recreate. They have to go from memory because they yeah. just, you know, like went. So how do you franchise if you don't have that moment of a plan and that you your can... foundation, I right. mean, even the business plan from when we started to now is completely different. Okay. Yeah. But the is still there. Yeah. And so I think that's where a lot of people get confused because they don't do their marketing research. They don't do business plans. And so then in a year or two from now, they're like, oh, we're struggling because that foundation was never there Mm -hmm. or they missed the choo-choo train for a franchise opportunity because they didn't see it. And when you're writing out your business plan or your marketing research, you're really getting an idea of like, what is lacking? What is missing? I mean, that's one of my biggest things to the success of the store is we opened at a a perfect time and it went. Right. So did did they approach you to wanting to open a store in Beaumont or what was that process? Tell me a little bit about that picture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, without saying too much, um, (laughs) I will will say that I, it was approached and just because the way we run the business. So how we step and everything that's lined and it's literally only getting better and better and better and better. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think we're. Yeah, I think a lot of people too, they run into consignment, you know, hey, I'm going to run a store, but it's not as a, easy as they think it is. And second of all, they don't realize I'm all about the inner workings of businesses. Mm-hmm. So even if it's not my own, my brain just goes into that. And I'm just like, how does that work? Like, why are they doing that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so for me, my biggest thing was if the heart and soul of the store doesn't work, we've got nothing. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's and so that's cool. And she, she was, yeah, she was a consigner. So she was a consigner and she just has been part, she has been one of my biggest supporters from the beginning of us opening our doors. That's super cool. Way to like, as a moment, I hope you celebrated when she came in and said, Hey, um, like we celebrate all the time. <laughs> yeah. And like, cause that's, that's a pretty inspiring moment that you have someone and they're, they, they're so inspired by what you do and how you're running your business. They're like, I yeah. want to do that. Like that's, yeah. that takes a lot of. Well, and knowing your worth, awesome. worth and value too within it and how much work I've put into it. Right. Cause you don't sometimes really put your confidence out there too. You're just like, Oh yeah, it is what it is. But that being said, you know, like she could have opened her own, Mm -hmm. no problem. And I would have supported her and been happy for her. But the beauty is what we have laid out, Mm -hmm. you know, and the B and key name, it's like, you don't forget those things. If that makes sense. Like it's one of those names that kind of still, so for her, it was that what it embodied. And I was grateful because that was I mean obviously I want to cry because that was the one thing that when we first started it was huge to me it's not just a store it's not just a boutique it's not you walk in buy stuff and then leave it goes way deeper for me on that level Mm -hmm. the the connections I have through that store and the people that I see and that you know I've carried throughout anyway yeah yeah. for sure I won't cry on this this meeting but (laughs) so tell me then a little bit about the name B and Key like where did that come from what is So funeral directing, I decide to do like a side project and I'm like, oh, I'll go into Etsy and we'll do vintage clothing because I love vintage clothing. Like that's the one side note people don't know is that I love if I could take all the vintage items I would. (laughs) However, I would probably be out of business. Um, So it started off with that and the store, we called it B&Key Vintage. And B and Key, my name is Rebecca, shortened down as to Becky, and my hubby calls me B Key. So with the emojis, it was the B and Key, and then the heart. So uh, B Key Love. So then that just turned into B and Key Boutique. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. And who doesn't love a bumblebee? I mean, right? like, let's be honest. Yeah. No, it's true. That's fantastic. Oh, that's a really great story. I'm going to definitely remember that. That's yeah. awesome. So what is it that you love about the Leduc in our community? Um, I have fallen in love 
even even in the bad so like our baddest moments of our community of Leduc Grant and Rave, God love everyone, but <laughs> that being the only negative that I can think of at this point, the positive is just it's there. I mean, the feels that yeah, there is so much that we have to offer. And I think it just needs to be magnified a little bit more over us incredible humans that what we have going on in Leduc is pretty special. Mm -hmm. And to see things that, you know, other fellow people have done, like the Leduc art walk. Like that is like, yeah, pat on the back because that was something that was, it was almost overwhelming in the sense that it was, what is this happening? Mm -hmm. People are coming all the way over just to come to our little town. It's not little, but little, but to come all over from all over Alberta to come see us. And I just think that there's a lot that we have that hasn't been released for a lot of potential that could take off. Mm -hmm. So the community means a lot to me and what we, what we have to bring with all the other businesses and their dynamics. And yeah, there's some good, there's some good people here. Yeah. Well, yeah. the, the, the arts and culture is definitely something that a lot of council members have been trying to push and trying to diversify us from just being a sports community to, uh, you know, bring in the arts and culture and all the festivals and stuff. So, yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Is- and it's been it's been there. I mean, so Leduc uh, Drama Society, which is my heart. So that's something that I'm huge in. If you walk into my store, you'll see my golden Barbies on my my wall. Um, so the Duke Drama Society has been a huge part for me and the community of women that go around that too. It's to be able to see what we have to offer and just, yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited. And our community within the store, the women that have been part of my entire journey, they're still, it's just a community. Like Mm -hmm. that's where it's about quality, not quantity. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Yeah. Oh, my heart is so full. That's, that's, <laughs> it, it, that's fantastic. It makes me in, so inspired to, to be a part of this community. Like I'm, I'm on born and raised. I don't really know anything different, but I'm so yeah. like, it's, it's beautiful. And I'm so proud of where we come and, you know, mm. we're just on the, like, we're still a small city. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, get, I can't wait to see where we go. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm like, eh. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what's your favorite restaurant in Leduc? No, I have so many, (laughs) so many. Um, So everywhere and everything is like for that different feel. Do you know what I mean? So like we've got real roots. So, and then like Leduc Diner, if I want my lasagna, like, do you know what I, and then basil's for pizza. And then we've got Duke Sushi Factory when I'm feeling like sushi and like, you know, bash your don't air, like all of these and even convenience stores that we have that are just like, the little odd thing that you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Okay. And then it's delicious. Yeah. So yeah, no, there's a few, true. there's a few spots that it's like, there's some good food. Yeah. I love the fact that you're like, you like me and it's, it's all what I'm craving that day. Oh, like, yeah. What, what do has, I want? <laughs> it has nothing to do with like, oh, that's the go-to. Oh, even fat Tony's. <laughs> yes. Like, it's just like, you know, one, okay. Yeah. I'm feeling like that today. So yeah, I'm very, there is no favorite. I know that sounds like a very open like answer, but no, no. Yeah. Fat Tony. So I worked hot lunch for my kids school one time and some kid came down and had to compliment us on the apple that fat Tony, I've never had such a good apple. <laughs> it's like, you know, of all the times and all the things someone can compliment you on. It was the only time a kid actually had to like walk down to say how good of an apple. Potato salad. No, that yeah. wasn't good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just- it was such a great apple. At Fat yeah, Tony's. that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have a special gift, where do you go in Leduc? A gift? Oh, man. Uh, jarred. Definitely, yeah. Even uh, Sarah D's. Mm-hmm. She's got some creative little pieces in there where you're like, uh, this isn't just for mom or my best friend or my sister, you know, or grandma. It's like you got dad stuff in there too. So yeah. There's definitely a few, few places, but Jard and I think Sarah D's would be my top go-tos. Nice. Yes. And if you have a day off, how do you spend it? Um, in silence. Yes. Yes. Everything gets shut off. Yeah. I'm not here. I don't exist in the sense that like, I, that's where I really need to rest on my day off mm-hmm. and it's chill, catch up on TV, hang out with my kids, 
swim in the pool now since it's getting warmer. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. So yeah, that's, that's how I spend my day off is just. Kudos to you for, for shutting off the phone though. No. Like that's a, that's a big moment in boundaries and a lot of women don't have boundaries. Like they just, yeah. they don't, they feel like they need to be everything to everybody at all times. No. So and, I think that that's, I had, congratulations. <laughs> I think I had to let that go though, because you think about how many times you get your phone and you're like, I need to answer this now. And it just, it controls you to the point that I'm like, I don't care what people think about me now. If I'm, if they're like, Oh, I messaged her and she hasn't gotten back to me. That's a, like, no, I had to let that the idea of who we think other people think we are when we don't respond right away, I had to let that go. Cause whether it was just me that thought that, or maybe them, it doesn't matter at that point, my mental health and well being is more important for me and my family than me answering an email. No, totally. Yeah. Yeah. But no, congratulations. Like I'm, I, I'm on a women's call once a week. And that was like the biggest thing about all these business women is no one has any boundaries. They're like, yeah. how do you say no? Like, how do you not? And how do you detach? And like, that's like a common thread in conversation. So I'm very oh, proud so for you. have to say no. Right. It yeah. is even to this day. So as much as I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's times that, you know, they're like, uh, mommy, get, get off your phone. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. I get it. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. And what's your favorite book to read and why? Um, so I finished, I got it from the thrift store. I just finished it. It's the second sequel to gone with the wind Scarlet. Oh, I didn't realize there was a sequel. Yeah. And so uh-huh. she did. <laughs> That's awesome. No, oh, cool. So you got your book at a thrift store too. Hey, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's some there's some goodies in the thrift stores. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. So it definitely is a running thread then. So the consignment yes. in a thrift store and it's definitely a passion. You still shop there still. Yeah, I do. That's I do. Fantastic. And it's, it's always something that's, yeah, you just find these cute little like aha moments where you're like, oh, okay, that's coming home with me today. <laughs> I'm sure my, I'm sure my husband's like, oh, sweet, sweet Lord. <laughs> <laughs> probably he's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listening community today um I think my biggest thing if I could you know educate anybody with small businesses on the sense that if I could give anything back it's to be more graceful to business owners and it's not just me it's to a lot of the Do you know what, just to have that opportunity where we actually, as much as it's easy to rant, opportunity of grace to be given, especially in the hard situations, because we don't know what every single business is walking through right now. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what those owners are experiencing on a day-to-day basis. So, I'm going to freeze again. Yeah, I'm going to ask that question one more time. (laughs) Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listening audience today? Yeah, it's the, as easy as it is to give negatives and not a rant um, on other business owners, especially because I know this is such a stressful time. I, I hope that more grace can be given to business owners throughout our community because this isn't an easy thing. And I know a lot of struggles from other business owners and what they've experienced. And it's so easy to knock someone down, but without knowing that there's a lot that they have to do to survive. And the mental health that goes behind that is, I mean, a lot of us are pushing ourselves. And Mm -hmm. so I think if anything, it's an understanding for both sides to be just graceful and forgiving and understanding even when things don't go right. And that's okay. It's going to happen. I think, you know, with COVID being where it is now, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, but yeah, that negativity, I mean, it's really got, it's got to stop at some point. I mean, you're going to have people no matter what, but there's, there's got to be more, more love, more love. I mean, that's my biggest thing. So yeah. 
No, it's true. And I, and I try not to participate in the rants and raves and the raves, but you know what? That's, Some of them are funny. <laughs> right? But no, I can understand where like you're coming from in, in regards to seeing yeah. and having that and taking the grace. That's a really good word to use, the grace yeah. for the businesses. Because yeah. And I think it. That's a good it, word. it is. And if it didn't exist, it would be a different story, right? Because if you can actually walk into a business and have a conversation with a business owner and be more relaxed about it, you're going to find out that things get answered and solved a little bit more quicker than via blasting some business on, you know, rant and rave. And I'm not just, like I said, speaking, I don't care about my own because I'm like, rant. Mm -hmm. unless you're going to come in, I don't care. But, you know, simple things, it, it affects a lot of them. And I, I hear the other side to the other people. And it's, it's actually quite saddening that we think that it's an okay thing. Mm -hmm. And if we want to keep growing and getting bigger and better then yeah, those business owners, it took a lot for them to even open their doors Yeah. at one point. And there needs to be that gratitude that goes behind it and appreciation for that. So I think if anybody can walk away with anything, it's just to give everyone, even for business owner to business owner, just giving each other that grace to be like, Hey, you okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I think that yeah. comes too with the fact that stillness is something for you because it's in the stillness that you can pause to reflect, to be like, no, I got to give some grace. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Cause a lot of it, I think is just people just go like, they don't pause themselves. They just have a moment and they react. They have a moment and they react. Yeah. There's no breath between yes to and then be the, like yes yeah there's no breath and then not only that it's go react go react and for what I mean I remember when we first opened our door somebody said we only carried uh size extra small well first of all I'm not a size extra small and we had a queen section so yeah. I'm like we carry all sizes and so the just that idea of like that's how we but I could have reacted and I chose not to because I said, no, word mm -hmm. of mouth speaks volumes and I don't need to worry about that. But that go react, go react. And then that, that punch, right? I mean, it's a lot. And so, yeah, I think in asking each other too, like, you okay? Or what can I help you with? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even see where we need help until somebody asks us. And I think that's, I think that's where COVID's really changing us to morph into something to be better than what we were. Yeah. Which the is beautiful. Yeah. The silver lining on it all oh. is that, yeah, we do ask for help, but it's okay to need help. Yeah. Even our Zoom meetings that we had for the Main Street Board. I mean, I wanted to cry a few times afterwards because how beautiful it is to finally having a platform where we can all talk to one another. Mm-hmm. What are your yeah. problems? How's it going? You know, so it, it's, it's really changing the game to where when we first started. So, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm so inspired. Thank you for leaving me inspired. inspired um, for. <laughs> I'm so ex I'm excited on the fact that you're giving us an opportunity to even talk about all this stuff. So thank you. Well, I really hope that it helps because like a little bit of my story for this is that when I was shopping on main street for Christmas, I got to chat to the business owners and, hmm. you know, all you see is driving down as you see the sign, but hopefully in getting to know the business owners and really connecting, that would be fine, be more inspired and passionate to shop there and to support and, um, really get hmm. to know who, who is creating our community and in creating the environment in the stores. So, yeah. um, I'm, re I'm really hoping that I can, that this platform will, will help support you in, Aww. in your endeavors. And Hey, even if it helps one person or they get inspired from it, that all, that's all that matters to me. Yeah, for sure. I, that, yeah. Per that, that person can turn around and open a business too. And then that's just as, as inspiring. Right. Right. For so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. I really appreciate it. Um, and I can't wait to uh, come in and shop myself. And I'm definitely Aww. going to probably bring a couple of ladies in for my birthday. I think that would be a great idea. I love it. <laughs> well, I thank love you so it. very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Talk to you. Thanks.